Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you've joined in to watch this. This is Lighty Collects coming to you with another video. Um, first and foremost, let me apologise that there wasn't um, a live stream this Saturday morning. Um, I personally haven't been feeling 100%, um, so we decided to give it a skip for today. Um, but like we did last week, we might come back Monday during the week um, and give you a live stream during the week. Um, we'll have to see, you know, how it goes. Um, but anyway, finally I can bring you the new Innovation in Science 50p, which is the DNA Helix Discovery from Rosalind Franklin. Now, I know certainly on a few of the groups, this is a coin that's sort of split um, people's opinions. Um, personally, myself, I really like it. I like what the stand co uh, coin stands for, which we'll get into a little bit um, more as we go on with the video. Um, it's my understanding um, that as we currently stand, the Royal Mint has said it is not intended for circulation. However, that could change depending on demand. Quite what they mean by that, um, you know, your guess is as good as mine, really. So, what this coin is, it's the third in the series. Um, with Isaac Newton and Stephen Hawkins for the Innovation of Science and recognising people who have made significant um, finds within science. Um, the picture depicts photograph 51 which again we'll go into in a little bit more detail as we go on with the video and then obviously we can see down here Rosalind Franklin and DNA um, at the bottom. I really like the way they've included the DNA on it and, and sort of, you know, pushed it into her name. Um, it's something that I, I just really like. As I say, I know this is a coin that has really split some opinions, um, but we'll have a, a bit more look and a bit more of a talk about that as we go along. But, uh, yeah, so let's open it up and have a look and see what we got inside. Now, I actually like this. Um, with this coin, normally you open them up and you have all the information um, sort of in a little booklet included in the, um, the packaging. With this one, they've actually included a little booklet with it, um, which I really like the idea, the way they've done that. Um, so the booklet actually comes out, and literally all you've got up left in there, science and everyday life, cannot and should not be separated. And that's obviously a quote from Rosalind Franklin herself. And then just on the back, you have a brief description or brief um, thing about Rosalind Franklin, pioneering research into coal and graphite DNA and fire structures helped advance humanity's course. Tragically, a brilliant career was cut short, denying her the awards and recognition that would surely have come her way. The second coin in our innovation in science celebrates the legacy of a remarkable scientist whose immense intellect and uncompromising approach achieved breakthroughs in multiple fields. And then obviously the specifications for the coin over on this side. Denomination 50p, United Kingdom, Cupra Nickel, 8 grams, 273 millimetres, brilliant uncirculated, designed again by Jody Clark and the reverse by David Napton who I believe um, also designed the Team GB and the Paddington, or was it, no, sorry, WWF and Paddington, I believe it was. Um, so he's got a bit of 
you know, history with signing them. So moving on then, we'll have a look into the brochure. Um, and as I say, this one tells you an awful lot more um, about Anne Franklin, uh, Rosalind Franklin herself. I don't know why I keep wanting to call her Anne. Um, and there's quite an interesting story actually. Um, she never actually got credited with photograph 51. Um, there were a couple of other people, as you can see on this one here. Um, in May 52, Franklin and Raymond Gosling produced photograph 51 and showing an x-ray at a right angles for more than 60 hours on a sample of DNA fibres. They derived an image from which a three-dimensional model of DNA could be determined. If you just think about that for a minute, this is back in 1952. So it really was breakthrough um, science at its best, I guess you'd call it. Um, here, telling us more about, um, I think it was these two, I think it was James Watson and Francis Crick. Um, I think they got awarded something like the Nobel Peace Prize or something um, for photograph 51. Um, let's have a just quick scan on this. Uh, Watson and Crick were attempting to model the structure of DNA, a proponent of open science. Morris Wilkins was a frequent visitor. In March 53, Franklin left to work at Burbank College. Around this time, Wilkins showed photograph 51 to Watson without her knowledge. It was the final clue the pair needed to determine the double helix structure. They moved quickly to publish their findings in Nature magazine. The issue included Franklin and Gosselin's paper, along with photograph 51, but their contribution was not properly acknowledged. Um, I'm sure they did win some sort of an award for it, um, and, and she totally got ignored for it. Um, it's a bit about DNA on here. Did you know that humans have around 10 trillion cells? The entire DNA contained within these cells would stretch 10 billion miles and have to travel to the Earth and Sun more than 100 times. Um, and then again, um, some more information underneath. Um, So I just think it's, uh, I think it's a really interesting coin. Um, I think the, the story that comes along with it, I find it a really fascinating story. Um, and as you can see, this is how they came up with um, photograph 51 by shining the light through the x-ray for some 60 hours. Um, Ah, oh, there we go, yes, there we are, we're right there. In 62, Watson, Crick and Wilkins received the Nobel Prize for their work. There was no mention of Rosalind Franklin. In 68, Watson published The Double Helix, his account of the race to solve it. The book was an affront to Franklin's family and friends who did not recognise this version of Rosalind, who Watson portrayed as the villain of the piece. Um, but as we can see, obviously, she was rightfully... Um, recognised for it um, so everything uh, ended quite well <laughs> and then up on here we got a structure of DNA um, and explaining more about it as we go down um, so as I say it's to my knowledge it's quite Quite a controversial, so a lot of people, here's more about the designer. Um, just telling you how he come up with the design. And flip you over um, to there. So yeah, I say it's quite um, a controversial design, I think. A lot of people aren't too sure about it. Um, I hope 
the, this stays as an uncirculated coin. Um, why do I say that? Looking at the design features on this coin, um, I'm not overly convinced that this would make a good circulated coin. Um, what I mean by that, imagine this coin two or three years old, um, I don't think it's going to look particularly nice. Um, I think it's going to get scuffed up a lot um, and it, it's not going to do the coin justice in my opinion so i hope it stays as an uncirculated coin just my opinion um let me know what you guys think about this coin um down below in the comments is it one that you like do you like the design would you like it to see to see it circulated um or are you happy just to keep it as it is um right i've got one last thing to show you uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to manage this. I'm going to have to lift the camera up a bit. Um, this is just something that I knocked up for my brother um, and his his family. Um, just to turn you back round. Uh, we can see at the top there it's Darren coming down. We've got Jessica. It's my brother's daughter's name. And then going across Nick's or Nicky. Or I've chose to put Nick's on it. Um, it's my brother's wife. Um, so it was just something, a, a little something that I knocked up for them. Um, thank you to Lou. She helped me out with a couple of the coins. 